as the bartender leads you through a back door and down some rickety steps, you see a crowd of people cheering around what seems to be a hole in the floor. As you get closer, you notice two warriors swinging their weapons, blood splattering everywhere. With patrons sculling bottles and throwing coins at the bookies, you realise that you're in an illegal underground fire pit. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And this week I'm going to show you how I made this fight pit arena for my D&D campaign. This build was a special request from my DM in a campaign that I'm playing in. If you'd like to see how it plays out in game, follow us on Instagram at Tomes and Tales RPG. We're going to be doing a podcast on Spotify and hopefully getting a video podcast running on YouTube. But for now, let's get to the build. I started off with a 2 inch thick piece of foam board, measuring out a 14 inch by 14 inch square to use as our base. Before sketching out the rough shape and idea of what I wanted to cut out. So we have a hexagonal fight pit and a couple of paths leading our warriors into the pit. Next up I used a large kitchen knife to cut this out. The best way to get a straight edge on these thick pieces of foam is to do a series of long straight cuts. Rather than trying to cut it out in one go. Now that we've got it down to the right size, it's time to start cutting out these details. I'll be using this cheap hot wire cutter that I got off Amazon, and because it's so small, I have to go through and cut it out in sections. But it is still a lot quicker than using a knife, especially on these thicker board pieces. So I separate the base into its two pieces and continue to cut out the details along the planned base that I have drawn. This could be done with a knife and you could do it a lot less cleanly than what I'm doing as a lot of this is going to end up being covered up with details as we go further into the build. But since I have this hot wire cutter, why not use it to make it a little bit easier on myself. And there we have the basic shape of our fire pit. Now it's time to build a base out of MDF board. So we measure up the same 14 by 14 inch square and take this outside to cut it with the jigsaw. And once that's done, we come back in for a quick dry fit to make sure that everything matches at the right size. And this looks perfect. So I grab out some wood glue and coat the entire area that the base will sit. Once I have this nice and spread out, I also use a little bit of hot glue around the edges, just making sure that it stays in place while allowing time for the PVA glue to set. Then repeating the exact same process on the other section of board. And now we have our basic shape. The next thing I do is grab out some granny grating. This stuff is perfect for cages and metal, and I'm going to use it as a top layering to these entryways, so that our patrons can still walk over top of this area, but we're going to make this removable as to be able to still put miniatures inside these walkways. So we mark out a slightly larger size on the grating and cut these to fit. The next detail that I want for the fight pit is a wooden barrier around the edges of the pit. So I grab some craft foam and cut these to size before going through and carving in a wooden texture over all of these edges. To begin, I cut out the individual planks of wood and then go through with the scalpel on a bit more of an angle to really deepen up and widen these cuts. And repeating this for all of the edges of our fight pit. Once all of them are carved into their basic shape, it's time to add a few more details. So we scratch in a few more timber lines across all of these boards. We then seal up the foam with a bit of a Mod Podge and black paint mix watered down so that it really sinks into these gaps and doesn't take over and lose any of our detail. I'll be repeating this process over most of the build as we go along. So once I have finished with these wooden edges, I'm going to start doing the same thing to all of the outside edges of our foam board, making sure that once we do hit this with spray paint later on, it doesn't melt away and ruin our nice straight edges. This was my first attempt to add some brick patterning onto the inside of our entryways. I cut down the foam in the same way that I did for the wooden edges, but used a texture roller to try and add some brick patterning, 
This didn't work out too badly, but as I went further along, I just didn't think that it held enough detail for what I wanted. So ultimately, I replaced this, and you'll see what I did later on in the video. The next thing I did was took all of these outside now that they were sealed up and gave them a spray paint. I tried a few different things as I went along, starting with a grey primer. I then came in with a brown spray paint over all of the wooden effects, eventually deciding to hit them all with a Wraithbone White from Citadel, as I wanted these details that I'd carved in to come out a lot stronger, and realising that I could achieve this with a contrast paint. So I took a Gore Grunter Fur and mixed it about 50-50 with the contrast medium to water it down just a little bit further. I then coated all of my wooden effects with this and loved the end result. My next step was to coat the entire base with tiles. So I grabbed out a few scrap pieces of that crafting foam that I used earlier and started to mark out one inch square grid over the entire thing. By using one inch tiles, this also helps us in gameplay with our movement. And now for the incredibly long and tedious task of cutting out all of these tiles. And there was a lot of them to cut. Once I had them all cut out, I threw them into a box with some rocks and shook it up to give them a bit more texture before applying a healthy amount of glue on top of my base, spreading it out and taking my time to lay out all of these tiles. And this took quite some time, realizing halfway that I didn't have enough tiles so I had to do an entire second batch. Once I'd gone through the entire board, I added a heap around the edges and started cutting away at the overlay, giving me a nice clean edge to my fight pit. You might notice the dirt over the rest of the build that I poured on just to help fill in some of the wider gaps in between the tiles, before giving the entire thing a coat in the same Mod Podge and black paint mix. As I started to do this though, I realized that I wanted to add some more detail to my stonework so I grabbed out my scalpel and started to carve cracks into a heap of different tiles. Taking my time going around the entire board and adding these little details can make a big difference to the final end result. And once I was happy with the amount of cracks in my tiles, it was time to get back to sealing everything up with the Black Magic Craft Mod Podge and Black Paint Mix. And while we leave that to dry, it's time to paint up those cages from earlier on. So I'll take them outside and spray them with a metallic silver spray paint before building out a frame out of coffee stir sticks that I've painted with the same metallic silver and a few extras that are going to need a repaint. Once we've got them cut down to size, we just add a little bit of super glue and stick these in place. This is going to help to make these areas a bit more solid while also adding another layer of detail on top of these cages. Now I can't imagine any of this metal in an underground fight pit has gotten away without having spills and moisture leaking into it. So I'm going to use a collection of rust effects paints to coat these guys in a dappled variation of rusts. Giving us that nice, worn, old, disgusting, dirty look that's going to match with the rest of this build. And then repeating this across all of our metal grating. And now while these have a chance to dry, I decided to try something different for the brick edges of my walkways. So I got some air dry clay and some of these texture rollers to give a nice brick pattern. And being a terracotta clay, they're going to have a better texture in the end result. I used the original pieces of foam that I cut out as a template to make sure that I cut these down to the right size before leaving them on a flat surface overnight to dry. The following day, I think I made these a little bit too thin as they started to warp and crack, but ultimately this just gave me more different effects in my walls, as cracked areas through the walls of this underground doesn't seem too out of place to me. So I got to gluing them in place. I used a healthy amount of PVA glue along all of these edges and added some to the back of the build themselves to make sure that everything stuck in place. Going through and gluing in all the pieces pressing them up nice and tight against the wall, sometimes causing more cracks, but once again, this just adds further detail to my build. As the material was a little bit weak, I decided to coat the entire thing with that Black Magic Craft Mod Podge and Black Paint mix, 
This will help to seal everything up and give it a nice solid layer, keeping everything together before taking the build outside and giving the entire thing a coat in a grey spray paint primer. Once this was dry, I busted out my DIY brown wash and coated the entire model, letting this seep into all of the gaps and then dabbing away any excess with some toilet paper. This will just help to fill in those gaps with a slightly darker tint and help to dirty up the bricks, giving a slight bit of variation across our top colour making sure to coat the entire build before leaving it out in the sun to dry. And now that we have a nice grey dirty looking base, it's time to dry brush a few extra bright grey highlights over all of the stonework to really bring it to life. And then dry brushing a few more highlight details onto these brick walls along our fighters entryways. Now that most of the paintwork is done to the base, it's time to start adding a few of our wooden details. So we'll place everything where it's going to end up. At this point I decided I wanted to cut out some bigger pieces of wood to stick around the top to frame our fight pit. For this I used this balsa wood kit that I got from my local Bunnings. I picked out the size of the wood that I liked, marked out the size and chopped it down with my Japanese handsaw. Always making sure to double check that I cut it down to the correct size before moving on to the next piece. As I went around I used each of the previous pieces to get the angle right on the next piece of wood. Slowly but surely dry fitting each piece making sure that everything would fit nice and snug. At this point I decided to glue in those wooden edges around the fight pit so I could start sticking things down to the top. One at a time, I just went around with some hot glue and made sure that everything fit in nice and tight. I wanted to make sure I had these glued in before I moved on to gluing down the top pieces so I knew that everything would fit. And once I was happy with these, I painted those top timber boards to match with that gore grunter fur. Then with a nice bead of hot glue, I could stick each of these into their place. The next stage was to do a couple more of these to connect up these final two pieces, but in this case I wanted there to be a gap between the metal cage and the beam. By leaving this small gap between the two, I had an area that I could slide a small cage through, giving us the ability to open or close these doors with a small tab sticking out the top. I painted these up to match the other metal pieces, and while they were drying, I decided to add our dirt base to the fight pit. So I gave the entire base layer a coat of Mod Podge and then just continued to sprinkle a heap of different dirts onto the base, making sure to get right up to the edges and all the way down these paths. As this is just dirt from the garden, I then came in with a spray of isopropyl alcohol to kill off any bugs and also to help break down the watered down glue that I'm going to apply over the top to help hold everything in place. Once this has been given some time to dry, we're almost complete. It's time to put our cages in and see how everything sits. The gates fit perfectly, but they do fall forward a little bit, which I'll be addressing a little bit later on in the build. As for now, we don't want any of our patrons falling into the pit when they get a little bit too excited. So I decided to jump over to Tinkercad and design some fence posts that we could hang some chains off to help hold our patrons back. Once I was happy with my basic design, I exported it and brought it over to Chitterbox, where I scaled it down and multiplied it before printing it out on my Elegoo Mars 2. Two hours later. And they came out perfectly on my first print. So I cleaned them off in some isopropyl alcohol, cured them in the sun, and then gave them a spray with a grey primer. I then painted them with a Citadel texture paint to attempt to add a little bit more of that roughness back to these smooth edges and then came in with a copper paint to paint those toppers. The idea is for these to be placed at each of the points of the hexagon with a chain stuck down between them. I'll be using a cheap jewellery chain that I got from a local craft store that cuts quite easily to glue in place between each of these posts. 
It was actually a total pain in the ass to glue these to the posts. It took me forever to get them to hold in place long enough to dry. I did use some accelerant in some places, but it really just didn't do the trick most of the time. It was a very tedious job. While it ends up looking really cool, I did find a much better option further down the line. You see, if I was to do this again, I would use magnets. I realized a little bit too late that if I just glued a magnet to each side of these posts, I could have just allowed the jewelry chain to stick to the magnets. This would have been a much better option because it would have made them removable and given a bit more variation to ways that you could use this board. Now back to what I mentioned earlier. The gates weren't quite holding in place, so I cut down and painted some bits of coffee stir stick that I could stick here as a frame to help hold them and guide them without them falling forward. And this did the trick. Now we have removable gates that won't fall out of place. Now that we have all the practical elements done, it's time to add in a few details. So I painted up a few of these small 3D prints to add in some details. We're going to start by throwing some braziers on the edges of the fire pit to really illuminate the stage and let everyone see what's going on. We'll then repeat this same painting process on a couple of these small torches that will stick by the entryways underneath to show off our fighters as they enter the ring. And now I like to imagine that some of our patrons get a little bit rowdy, so we're going to put in a couple of shattered bottles into the bottom of this pit that have been hurled in by some angry drunks. As well as a few broken weapons from some previous fights that have gotten a little bit out of hand. These models are available on my mini factory and I'll share the link in the description. While we're adding in some tiny details, I want to put a little bit more life into these entry pathways. So I'll remove these cages and stick down a few mushrooms growing out of the cracks in the side wall. These miniatures are available for free on Thingiverse. Again, I'll have the links in the description. And for one last piece of detail in these pathways, I'm going to add another torch so that our fighters know where they're walking. Now it's time to close this back up and work on the other pathway, doing something similar with a couple of small mushrooms growing out of the cracks in the stone and adding a torch to illuminate the pathway. Whilst I was working on these details, I did break a couple of the chains off of their posts. So I fixed them up using the magnet method that I mentioned earlier. This was a much easier solution and it also gives our DM the ability to have a couple of these chains come loose if he chooses. And now it's time to add some battle damage. I'm going to use some Citadel Blood for the Blood God effect paint and start placing this all over the weapons as well as some splatters around the walls and some areas where the blood has soaked into the ground. I then choose one place in particular and put a rather large puddle and then make it look like someone's been dragged out of the arena after they've been felled by their opponent. Then continuing to put a few more splatters and effects around the rest of the build, including putting some blood on this bottle that might have been used as an improvised weapon by one of our fighters. Now that our fight pit is fairly well done, we'll hit all of the edges with a nice black layer and work on somewhere for our patrons to sit. So with a few pieces of scrap wood, we can make these. Not bad for some basic seating, but that color doesn't quite work. Ah, that's much better. Now to use some scrap wood and scrap pieces of foam to make up a basic staircase. As I imagine that this fight pit is underground, this is gonna work as our entry and exit to the room. So we've got some coffee stir sticks for our steps and the edges are just made using that same wooden technique that I used to make the edges of the fight pit. And with a quick brown spray, it's good to go. Now, there's one last piece that I think this build needs. A stage for someone to stand and announce the fight. So I found this model on Thingiverse, which I printed out, cleaned it up, and gave it a spray in a grey primer. It was a little bit too smooth, so I gave it a coat in Astro Granite Debris Texture Paint from Citadel to give it a little bit more of a rough texture. As I started to paint the symbols on this pulpit, I decided to glue a couple more braziers onto here to change up the effect and remove the 40k style markings. While also adding a bit more of a light source to this entire underground fight pit. <laughs> 
And now we get to put everything together to make up our game board. And now we have the basics of our build all down on the table. It's time to add in a crowd to enjoy the fight. And now that the crowd has taken their seats, a well-dressed tiefling walks up on the stage to announce the fight as two warriors enter the arena. And now to fill in this area with a bit more life, we'll put a bar in the corner as well as a bartender to serve some drinks to our drunken crowd. And of course we have a bookie setting up in the back corner taking bets on the fight. He's gonna need some security to make sure that none of these drunken patrons get a little bit too rowdy after they lose a bet. And as the night goes on, more and more patrons manage to find their way to this underground fight pit to enjoy the show. I've tried to make this fight pit in a way that it could be used for a few different alternative situations. It could be the fight pit that it was designed for. Alternatively, it could be somewhere that a monster is kept and prisoners are thrown into. Or perhaps even a dungeon or sewer system. I hope you guys have found some kind of inspiration in this build. And if there's any cool ways that you can think how this arena would play out in your game, let me know in the comments below as well as sharing any other builds you'd like to see me make in the future. I'd love to see you as a new subscriber on the channel, and as always, never stop making stuff.